So we have our list with people here that we've fetched with use query and we have an add user button where we use the use mutation hook from React Query. And now I'm gonna show you how to interact with the query client and a few tricks that you can use to, to invalidate the data and fetch the data again. And also how we can update the cache instead of grabbing all the data that we already have. So let's move back to the code editor and we have the code here from the previous video where we created the mutation. So I'm just gonna continue on this code. And first we're gonna import a hook that's called use query client from React Query. So I add that one up here and down here in our app function, we can put it at the top, call the use query client hook. So in the const that's called query client, it's a lowercase q, camel case. I'm gonna use query client and call it. So I call that hook and we get the query client back here. And the reason that we get this one here with the use query client hook, that is because in the index, we created a client here and we wrap our complete application. So we have access to the query client in our application because we wrapped it high up in the hierarchy. So that's why we have access to it here. And we use the use query client hook to access it. So now we have our query client and for example, here, instead of the, this refetch function that we call here to grab the data again, we can use the query client to invalidate the data and that will automatically refetch the data instead. So imagine, for example, that you have a component tree where you want to refetch the data, say three, four levels down. You don't have to send this down by props. You can access the query client, you can invalidate the data and it will refetch the query instead of sending down this refetch function. I'm gonna remove refetch. And instead of refetch from my query client, I'm gonna call a method that's called invalidate queries. This one takes in the query key. And in our case, we have a query key that's users. So that's the query key. This way React Query knows that this is the query that we want to invalidate. And this also shows you that it's very important to have a unique key in our case, yeah, it's users. So if we invalidate the query that's called users, it will invalidate that query and it will refetch the data. So this is everything you have to do. We can actually see something now if we go back to the application and add a user, because as I told you in the previous video, this is a fake API, so it won't actually add a user, but it's actually invalidating this query now and it refetched all the data for us. So that's instead of the refetch, from the query client. But what we can do here, as we don't get any data back, and we can actually modify the cache to add the data. Instead of refetching the data, you can add that data to the cache. So we don't have to hit the endpoint to grab the data again. So yet again, on the qu query client, dot, we have something that's called set query data. And we want to set the data on the users. So we have that key. We have a comma, and this one is gonna be called with a function where we get the old data so that we can have that data and add data to that old data. So old data, you can call it whatever you want. I want to call it old data because it is old data. So this is an arrow function, and I'm gonna return an object. So that's why I have parentheses. I have an implicit return instead of using an explicit return with a return statement. So I have parentheses, and then this is the object inside of the curly brackets that I'm gonna return. So I spread the old data. I want to keep the old data. And then if you remember the data, we go back here to check the data. You can see that we have the data in a prop that's called data. That's the actual users. And then we have some other stuff here. So when I spread this one here, I want to add in the new user to the data prop. And that one is an array, so I have the data prop. I have an array. Then I want to add a new user, and it's actually called data now, so I can rename this one to new user. That's the data that we get back from the mutation. So I'm gonna console log out the new user. It's a better name for that one. I want to add it at the top of the list, so I have the new user, and then I spread out from the old data, dot data. So I add this one to this array, and this is ES6 syntax where I spread this out 
So I can add this new user into this data. And then I spread out the old data to keep it. So from the query client, we have this method called set query data. We give it a key on what query we want to modify. We call it with a function that will provide us with old data. So I spread out the old data inside of the object. In this case, it's an object. So if you have an API that returns an array, you should, of course, return an array. You should return the same structure. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm spreading out the old data. And then in the data prop that we get back from the API, I create a new array where I attach the new user first in the array, and then I attach the old data. So that will hopefully add this user to the cache. And we don't have to hit the endpoint to grab the data again. So go back here. I'm going to reload it just to be sure. I click Add User. And it didn't work. Yeah, it's there for a second or so. I can see it. Yeah, and that's probably because of this one. Of course, I can't fetch the data again. So we have to comment this one out because now we're modifying the cache. So we don't need to fetch this data again. As again, this is a fake API. It will override it with the old data only because we're not actually adding something with the mutation. So I add user and you can see that it adds the user here to the list. So this is super, super cool because this will save a lot of API calls when you modify the cache directly like this instead of hitting the API again to fetch the data. And you're probably be used to doing this if you've been using Apollo or something, Apollo client. You can modify the cache there also. So this is super neat. And in this case, we actually solved our problem with not adding any data to the actual database. We can actually see the added data now when we're using this fake API. So it's a little bonus in this tutorial. So that's the query client, how you can invalidate queries and fetch the data again, and how you can modify the cache on the query client so you don't have to hit the endpoint again and grab the data again when you already have the data. All right, if you like this one, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Tomorrow I will put up another video in this React query series.